queen h5, g6, takes. If we take everything, then he's checkmated because of our bishop. If queen h5, g6, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. We, yeah, that looks really, really like a problem. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12 of Bikaro Khan vs Everything Speedrun. In this series I play one 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on chess.com and regardless of whether I have the white or the black pieces, we'll be playing a Karo Khan-esque setup to explore the ideas of Bikaro Khan thoroughly throughout this series. If you want to see the previous episodes, make sure to check the playlist below. Before we get into this, I want to say a massive thank you to Nicholas Andre, who is the first channel member for the Chess Centurion channel. Um, I actually only released the, the channel memberships yesterday. I'm recording this in advance. So big thank you to Nicholas and anyone else who wants to join the channel as a member. I have exclusive videos, exclusive member only polls so that members can decide the future direction of the channel and chances to play against me for videos in the future. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into the game. All right, we are facing Joannes Flores from, I think that's mm, the Philippines. Hey, I'm getting really good with these, um, with these countries because previously I thought that was the Czech Republic, but there's a tiny little bit of yellow in it. Okay, C5, we're gonna go D4 obviously. So, okay, I guess this transposes to a very strange Benoni, because normally after d4, c5, white goes d5, and you get a Benoni structure with like e6, c4, takes, takes, d6. But that's not what we have. This is kind of interesting. Let's just develop normally. Um, chess the chess.com like opening explorer thing like what would be up here if you were playing on the computer so what I can see on mine it's going crazy with the different openings we're like transposing every single move but it's just normal Karo Khan moves c4 d4 and knight to f3 you know from the black side that's c6 d5 knight f6 which is just normal the point is that we're fighting for the dark squares in the center. And, you know, if my opponent takes, we're just going to take back with the C pawn. There is a good chance he might play D5. And it kind of, kind of would resemble like an exchange Slav sort of system, which would be quite interesting. I mean, if he takes, obviously you could take with the knight or the queen. But... Taking with the queen, you're just vulnerable to knight c6 attacking the queen. And if you take with the knight, I mean, after a move like d5, you're just not really getting anything. Because you have no central presence. You don't control a dark square on e5 like you should be. One key difference, though, is if my opponent trades the pawns on d4, I'm trying to look for imbalance, right? is that our bishop is not blo blocked in by e3 yet, whereas his is already blocked in by e6, so he won't be able to develop his bishop that easily. Also, if he plays d5, then fiend-kettoing the bishop will just lead into a whole lot of nothing, really. So, we could maybe try and get a bit of an advantage if my opponent goes something like d5 by playing like bishop to f or something along those lines, although that is looking rather London -y. So, <laughs> if d5, we could maybe go bishop g5 to avoid that. And if my opponent blocks, then you know we can trade and play e3 and get the typical Karo Khan triangle, but without the London bishop. My opponent goes, does go d5. We could also consider the move queen b3, I guess. Or we could go e3 straight away and play it more like a collie. We could consider knight bd2. And then, you know, we can follow up with e3, bishop d3. But if we go knight bd2 first, we're not yet locking the bishop in with the pawn. Of course, the knight could move out the way to allow the bishop in. We could maybe do something like knight bd2, knight e5, knight f3, and then get the bishop out. If bishop g5, I don't know how I feel about queen b6. I think that's my problem, because b2 is a bit weak. 
And if I go queen c2 after takes takes, the c file is going to be open like in the future for rook c8. Although, if bishop g5, queen b6, we can maybe go queen d2, but that takes away the natural development square of the knight. We could take, but I just don't think it's a good move. To be honest, even if we went bishop f4, we'd still have the problem of queen b6. Like, that issue would still exist. So, let's go knight bd2. Let's do it. And... You know, even if we end up playing this in a locked structure with like e3, bishop d3, castle, it's going to resemble more of a collie. And the collie is actually a decent opening. Like, I played against it in a video on the channel like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, yo, this is actually not a bad opening. Knight b3 might be tempting to some of you guys to attack c5, but I think c4, knight goes back to d2 and we've just wasted time. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to play e3. In this position, we could have played a waiting move like a3 or h3, I suppose. But I think I'm going to take this in more of a collie direction, and many of the same ideas will still apply, so don't be worrying about it being irrelevant to those of you that play the Cairo Khan. Because... I mean, one, it'll just be an interesting game anyway, because I think the Collie is actually quite rich in terms of what it has to offer. And two, you know, this is the Cairo structure. And yes, the Bishop isn't outside of the pawn chain yet, but that doesn't always happen when you play the Cairo. Sometimes you do lock the Bishop in and you just have to live with it and get on with it. That kind of happened in the previous um, video in this series posted yesterday when... We had a semi-Slav defense from the black side, which, you know, if you play the Karo, it can be useful to know how to play the Slav as well, because they're very, very similar. So our opponent goes knight c6. I think bishop d3 is the move I want to play. Now, if cd4, cd4, knight b4, that is annoying. But if cd4, I'm going to take back with the e pawn to open my bishop back up. Okay, bishop e7. We could take and make him waste a move because then bishop e7 would have been useless because he's going to have to come back out to c5. But I feel like we're just relinquishing control in the center unnecessarily. Also, never play knight b3 in these positions because c4 will come with a fork unless you, you know, want to drop your bishop back first and then play knight b3. But you still probably get hit by c4. Although maybe that's not a bad thing. Um, h3 is a tempting move, but for now, the bishop isn't coming to g4 because we control the e5 square enough time, so he can't advance e5 himself to release his bishop. We could consider b3, bishop b2, which is a typical way of playing the collie. Um, and to be honest, this actually quite resembles a Slav defense, um, at least in my opinion. Rook e1 is also a good move because e4 is a common idea of the collie. So we just add even more support for that move. Because when you can get e4 and then you can, you know, release your bishop. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Not sure what I want to do. I'm not that experienced in these kinds of positions. So I'm going to treat it more like a Slav. And in a Slav, I think I would be in Keto. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go b3, and we're going to go bishop to b2. The bishop also has the option to come out to a3 if we really want. I think the idea will be to go something like bishop b2, maybe rook c1, and probably prepare c4 to unleash this bishop a bit more. Because if we play c4 and we play d takes c5 or he takes us then our bishop will have this whole diagonal to look at a6 i mean maybe he's just planning to take space maybe he wants to try and stop us from playing c4 i suppose that makes sense we could challenge him with a move like a4 if he does push and then like b4 c4 it could get complicated, but I think it might go in our favor. I'm going to play bishop b2 without all 
that much thought because my time management, as we all know, is absolutely horrific. Okay, A4 is what I want to play. My only issue is he could play C4. And after like takes takes, that looks really bad. We could take on C5. And after he takes... Hmm, maybe? It's an option. What if we go C4 straight away? We have one, two, three defenders on D4. So even if he takes like this, he'll only have three attackers. So we're fine. I don't think we have time to prepare with a move like Rook C1 because he's just going to play C4. So I think we should go C4 ourselves. And we've got a big clash of pawns in the center now. You know, all these pawns are staring at each other and something is going to happen. But I think we're very well set up for when things blow up. Because our knights are doing a great job at supporting our pawns. Our bishops are going to be looking at my opponent's king side once everything tears apart. And we have good pawn support for our pawns on c4 and d4. My opponent also doesn't have the option to play bishop to g4 because, like I said, we have even more control over e5 now because of our bishop on b2, which means this bishop could be a bit of a liability. Although, if he does end up trading his d-pawn off, it could come to the b7 diagonal to um, look at g2. So that's quite interesting. Although, maybe if he takes at some point, we'll be able to play e4 potentially. So that's also worth considering. We do have to be careful that if the d file opens up, we don't hang the bishop. That's something we have to be aware of. So, you know, if something like, I don't know, d takes c4, b takes c4, b5 happens, then we can't play a move like d takes c5 because our bishop will hang. So if something like this happens, maybe we play a move like queen c2. Or, I don't know. Okay, he does go for this. Like I said, he has three attackers on d4, but we have three defenders, so we're okay. And yeah, our bishop looks incredibly strong. If we can get d5 in at some point, that might be very good. He takes us on d4. Okay. I think it's probably better to take with the knight rather than the pawn. If pawn takes, pawn takes, like knight takes. I don't know how I feel about that. We could take on b5. Because we attack his knight, but then he takes on e3, and if we take him, he takes us. Don't think I love that. Let's play knight d4. If he takes, I'm of course going to take with the bishop, and we'll have an incredibly powerful bishop protected by the pawn on e3. And currently we are threatening to take his knight on c6. So he's going to have to do something about this. If he trades and then like trades on c4, then we probably put our knight there to look at the dark squares on like b6 and maybe e5 because this knight would be gone, remember? So it would have traded itself off. So that would be pretty cool. If my opponent tries to move like bishop b7 to protect his knight, okay. He doesn't, but if he does something like that, then um, b5 would be incredibly weak. Okay, he takes on c4. We've had a massive explosion in the center. Loads of pieces have gotten traded. I think we've come off better. Knight takes looks like the move to me, because we keep our bishops on these incredibly powerful diagonals. Let's go knight takes. Our knight could potentially try to invade on a square like b6. I think we've probably, I, I would say this is where the game really goes into the middle game now, um, that the center has exploded. And although we have like an identical pawn structure, except his A-pawn is advanced one square, but it doesn't really mean anything, our bishops are so much better than his bishops, you know, and he can't play the move E5 to get his bishop out easily. Okay, using knight D5, that defends the B6 square, but it does relinquish control of h7 which looks kind of risky 
Can we play Queen H5? Just threatening me. I don't know if that's just a one move threat or not. So I'm unsure. E4 allows the knight into a square like F4. It also destabilizes the bishop, so no need to do that. Could consider the move bishop e4, pinning the knight to the rook. But he probably just has bishop b7. Rook b1 would be a good move just to prevent him from going bishop b7. And he can't play rook b8 to challenge us because his queen doesn't defend the b8 square because his bishop can't move. The problem is, if I play a move like queen h5, he just goes g6. And he's going to challenge me here anyway. That might be the other purpose of knight d5, to play bishop f6 and challenge my bishop. So, okay. Okay, if I go rook b1, bishop f6, I do have the ability to go for a move like bishop c5, because he wouldn't be pinning my bishop to my rook. So that's also nice. Very complicated game, because the center is so open, there's so many like possibilities with where the pieces are looking. Very interesting. Hmm. I think rook b1, it looks like a slow move, but I think it's quite important, because it just stops bishop b7, which is what he wants to do. And if he goes to a square like d7... Um... I don't know, maybe... Ah, it's actually not that easy, you know. Not that easy. Actually, we don't even have to stop bishop b7. Because if bishop b7, I think we have bishop h7, king h7, queen b1 with a fork. Because it will come with check, obviously. And we can win the bishop back up a pawn. So actually, we don't need to stop the move bishop b7. As long as the queen has access to b1 and this comes with a check. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, what do I want to do though? Because bishop f6 is on the way. And he could kill our advantage kind of quickly. Hmm. e4, knight f4... No, I'm trying to look for tactics like bishop g7, but it doesn't work. Um, okay, rook b1 is still a decent move, though. Still not a bad move. It's not obvious how I should be improving my position, to be honest. He also has knight b4, but then we can just go bishop b4. What if we go bishop b4 now? Pinning the knight to the rook. Then we could try and bait out the move bishop b7. Because then we could do this tactic again. Okay, if bishop e4, rook b8. Maybe we have bishop to d5. Because he doesn't have bishop d6. Bishop e4 looks like a good move. Hmm. If bishop e4, bishop f6 take you can't take with the knights his rook hangs so queen takes and then take 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 bishop e6 that doesn't look that good um here here what if we take here first he takes 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 I think we emerge up a piece I like bishop e4 bishop e4 feels like the right move it's a really really tricky position I think we really are baiting this move bishop b7 out because bishop h7 and uh, queen b1 is a tricky tactic to spot he moves his rook quite quickly bishop a7 is also playable but there's no need because we already control the b6 square so, okay, bishop e5 is the move I want to play. We also put more pressure on the knight because our queen gets unleashed. If something like bishop e5, maybe rook b4 is his idea. 
attacking our knight and skewering our bishop. That might be his plan. Hmm. Very interesting. We could go knight e5, threatening knight c6 with a big fork. I like that. I really like that. Let's do it. That looks like a good move. Because even if he saves his rook and we get to play knight c6, then we can win his bishop, which means our bishop will be amazing. Because he won't be able to challenge us with bishop f6. You could play a move like bishop b7. Like, that's completely playable. Yeah, that's what he does, and he moves quickly as well. He's keeping time pressure on us. Um, Queen h5, g6. Wait, can we sack? Wait. Queen h5, g6, takes... If we take everything, then he's checkmated because of our bishop. If Queen h5, g6... Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. We, yeah, that looks really, really like a problem. Although, queen h5, knight f6, forks our queen and bishop and defends h7. That's annoying. What if, can we start with bishop h7? Bishop h7, king h7, queen h5. King G8. No, I don't think that works. Ah, that's so frustrating. Hmm. We could... Mm. I was thinking of, like, Queen G4 and sacrifices on G7, but it doesn't work. Because he can block on F6. We must have something. There must be something. Because look at the way our pieces are lining up. Knight f6 is the issue. It's very, very frustrating. I'll show you the line I mean after the game. It's kind of beautiful. Can we do this? Knight f7 if king f7, queen h5. We're winning. If knight f7, rook f7, queen h5, again, knight f6, take, take, check. He can just escape. That doesn't work. Could go rook b1, just because it's a decent move, pressuring the bishop. Knight g4 is an option. We control f6. If f5. Forking. Ah, that doesn't look good. Ah, this is really annoying. I can't find the way in. Can't find the way in. Let's go rook b1. I don't know whether I'm missing something here. Like, something blindingly obvious. But just the way my pieces are positioned, this is why I put them there. This is why I played moves like knight e5 and bishop e4, because I wanted to try and set something up on the king side, because it felt like there must be something. Okay, my opponent goes f6, kicking my knight. Now can I take? Bishop takes, king takes, check, king back. Knight g6. Is there actually a threat, though? I don't know. Is there a threat? Hmm. Again, it just feels like there's something in the position. <laughs> really does. Wait, can I just go queen h5? Because he no longer has knight f6. If he goes f5... Then maybe he survives, but he's very, very weak. If queen h5 and he takes, 
then he just gets mated. This classic checkmating pattern. Queen h5, g6, we just take it and he gets mated. Queen h5, he must... He has to go f5, right? He must have to go f5. And then we'll just figure it out from there. Yeah, this looks right. This looks right. Now he does block off the dark square diagonal, so f6 does achieve that. But it stops him from putting his knight on f6, which was the whole problem with queen h5 in the first place. Whew, this is really, really interesting. And we're down to a minute 30, which I mean, what a surprise, right? What a surprise. Never happened before on this channel or, any or anything like that. What are we going to do about f5? Because I'm sure that's the only move. What are we going to do? Um. Hmm. We could, of course, just go bishop f3 and slow play the position. f5, I'm trying to make something happen on g7. I couldn't make bishop h7, king h7, queen h5 work because I didn't think knight g6 came with a good enough threat. We could just retreat. Wouldn't be a bad move. Because e6 is incredibly weak. We can kind of slow play this position. We have some good pressure. e6 is weak. Our bishop is still very strong. Are we threatening bishop a7? Did we have that in a previous move? No, we didn't. Okay, now the knight goes back to f6. Also offers to trade of bishops. Kind of missed that, to be honest. Queen h3 looks like the most natural to me. So annoying that the knight's in the way of me taking, because then we'd be golden. But okay, this is fine. Our knight is still incredibly strong. The c6 square is still weak. If we trade bishops, whatever. We still have a very strong position. We're of course better. No doubt in my mind we're better. Trying to look for, like, after here, can I do something else other than queen takes? I obviously don't want to take with the knight because there's no point. Um, I was looking at rook b8. Or maybe after bishop f3. No, I can't do this because the bishop takes. Oh, yeah, I might as well just take back. Okay, I mean, we don't have a winning attack. But my opponent has made some major concessions in his kingside structure. Major, major concessions. We have a very active knight and a very active bishop on d4 and e5. His pieces, they're okay, but his pawns are just misplaced. If this pawn was back on f7, I mean, we'd be marginally better, but nothing big. Whereas here, it's a different story. We have very powerful queen, rook, bishop, and knight. If he goes knight to e4, oh, he's going to offer a queen trade. And he's going to attack a2 in the process. Smart move. And my game is freezing a bit. Please don't do this to me. Okay, now it's back. <laughs> oh, I nearly had flashbacks. Okay, what if I take? If I take and knight takes... I feel like we have a slightly better endgame. an option. I could go queen e2 and, and decline the trade, which honestly is probably better. Queen g3 is playable, but then knight to e4 comes with tempo. So let's just go queen e2 to keep an eye on a2. I know his queen's active, but maybe we can catch it out a bit. I want to play a move like h3, just to give my king some breathing room. And I don't... I honestly don't know what my plan is in this position. I mean, we're better. I know we're better. We're attacking a6 as well. Honestly, I didn't even notice that when I played queen e2. It was just the only move to decline a queen trade and keep my eye on the a2 pawn. Let's say he plays a move like a5. What's the plan? What's the plan? We could go rook b5. But then he might have... Mm. 
I want to save my king first, but it might be best. A5, rook, b5. This queen's actually running out of squares. Like, genuinely. Queen doesn't have many squares to go to. Let's say queen d6. Um, we could just take the pawn and be up a pawn. And he doesn't have any threats on us. If Okay, so I don't think a5 is a good move. What if he just plays rook a8? It's incredibly passive, but it does defend the pawn. What if he goes rook a8? I think we probably just start with h3, because we don't have any immediate tactics on him, like rook b5 if he plays a5. And then we just figure it out from there, because we no longer have to worry about our king's safety. The knight also can't come to g4, because we'll be controlling that square with a pawn as well. As these pieces, so our king will be very safe. I suppose he could try and put the bishop on d6 to look at this square. He could go bishop d6 now. He goes a5. I feel like rook b5 is the best move. It looks a bit risky, but our, we can always play queen f1 if his queen gets to our back rank somehow. Here, here. We go f3 even. This looks correct to me. I really hope I'm not blundering something, but this looks right. I don't think he can actually punish us. Queen e4 I mentioned, because if rook a5 he has queen b1. Of course we do have queen f1, but it's still kind of scary. But if queen e4 we could play f3 first, which forces his queen to either a8 or h4, both of which aren't very threatening squares. And then, well, I suppose if queen e4, f3, queen a8, he does defend the a5 pawn. I kind of missed that, but his queen is incredibly passive, which is why I missed the move, because <laughs> it's such a passive move, I didn't even consider it. We could just play a move like a4 in that position, just secure our rook, keep pressure here. If he goes for a move like bishop b4, he kind of abandons his king side a bit. That could cause some problems in terms of his king side safety. If queen a8, we can also consider a move like queen c4, going after e6, which actually might be a really good plan. Go go queen d8 as well to guard b5. Again, queen c4 looks very tempting. Because Sorry, my recording kind of cut out there. Um, I was going to say, I don't know how, I don't know when the recording stopped. Um, I ran out of disk space. I was trying to say, I think the e6 pawn combined with the weakness of the a5 pawn, might be the way that we win this game. Because, I mean, currently our pieces are coordinated incredibly well to put a ton of pressure on the black queen. Like I said, if queen e4, we probably just go f3, uh, because our rook is still monitoring b1 in that position. And if we can just put pressure on a5 and pressure on e6, and probably even pressure on g7 if he moves his knight out of the way, and, you know, moves his bishop to protect the a-pawn, maybe moves his knight to protect the e-pawn somehow, or, like, block this diagonal off by knight, play, playing a move like knight d5, then g7 could come under massive fire, which, you know, would be a big problem for him as well, right? So, it's a very promising position, it really is. I would guess the evaluation might even be something like plus 1.2, or plus 0.9, around that sort of range. Unless I'm just missing a clear win, I think black has massive positional problems here. And it's simply because our pieces are very active. Our queen, you could say, isn't active, but it's performing really, really nice defensive duties on e2 and can transfer to a square like c4 at a moment's notice. His queen is active, but she's getting booted around because she doesn't have support from her pieces. Like, all of these pieces are on the king side, and the queen is trying to play in the center and on the queen side. Yeah, queen a8, it's very, very passive. We could go knight c6. Oh, no, we can't. That hangs a knight. What am I on about? I think queen c4 is very good. If knight d5... Do we have anything? Queen c4, knight d5... Don't know. Don't know.
I'm just going to play h3. I'm sure this is not the best move, but I can play it quickly and without too much thought because it can't be a bad move. Controlling the g4 square, giving my king an escape square on h2 from getting back ranked. That can't be bad. Takes, takes, knight c6, queen b1. Um... We could go queen b2. We go queen c4. I'm gonna go queen b2, so I can line up with my bishop and with my rook. To apply... Oh, we also have some back rank potentials against my opponent. Because let's say he trades rooks and then tries to move his queen. If we give a check on the back rank, our knight controls the f7 square. So his king actually has no escape. He'd have to play a move like bishop 2 f8 to guard himself. Our queen's applying some good pressure. We could come into a square like b6 to look at the e6 pawn as well. Let's say knight d5. Um, what do we do? What do we do? Knight d5. Yeah, that's what he does. Queen d7 looks very tempting. Looking at the bishop, looking at the pawn, keeping an eye on the back rank. We're looking at the knight, but the knight's very well defended. We're also potentially lining up with g7 at some point. I think this is pretty crushing. I don't know how he defends himself. I really don't. Queen a6. Defends e6. We could play a move like knight c6 to cut the queen's connection and attack the bishop. If queen a6, queen e8, bishop f8, bishop c5, I don't see how he defends his bishop. That's probably winning. Oh, wait, no, that's even cleaner. Queen a6, queen e8, bishop f8. We have queen to f7 check, king h8, and queen to f8. So that is completely crushing. I Yeah, I don't know what he does here. <laughs> I really don't. If the e4... If the e-pawn falls, he has big issues because my knight is potentially coming into f7 to deliver some kind of mate. My bishop is still incredibly strong. His f-pawn will be weak, his knight will be weak, and if his knight's weak, then his bishop will be weak by proxy. Okay, queen f8, maybe a... Wait, no, that just gives me a knight. He can't do this. Remember, there's no smothered mates. There's no smothered mates, because the queen defends f7, because it's a queen. Okay, let's think about this a little bit. Oh, okay, we don't even need to. My opponent just resigns. So, very interesting game. Um, I know, that was... That was pretty good. No, By no means did it, do I think we played that perfectly. And I would be interested to see whether we did have some attacking win at some point earlier in the game that I just didn't spot. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'd encourage you to stick around for the analysis and let's get into it. All right, so 85.3% accuracy for myself and 77.7% .7 for my opponent. It looks like I made two like key mistakes in this game and other than that was pretty good. To be very interesting to see where these were. So obviously we have c3, c5, d4. And um, like, like I've disclaimed many times before, I know this isn't an objectively good opening for the white pieces, but it helps to understand ideas of the Karo Khan. Also just poses a nice challenge for this series because, you know, I'm, I'm rated far higher than 1500. So it would be boring if I was just playing like my normal aggressive openings every single game and just crushing people in like 10 moves by knowing a ton of theory like that wouldn't be fun so my opponent goes e6 we go knight f3 apparently this is theory obviously i don't know it and like i said i know bishop f4 is definitely the best move like i i, I get it but i'm not doing it because that would be a london 
So we go knight bd2, knight f6, e3, knight c6. We're just playing normal moves. My opponent's developing his knights. We're building the Karo Khan structure. Bishop d3. And I think we go into more of a collie system at this point. Uh, after bishop e7, this is now a collie. We castle, my opponent castles. I'm not spending a ton of time explaining these moves because they're quite self-explanatory. And we go b3. Now dc5 was playable, according to the engine. And then going for e4 straight away. I suppose that makes sense. But I felt like I wanted to build up a bit more before I did that. Um, Rook e1 isn't really that good because then knight g4 would be a bit of a problem when I move the e pawn I think something like e4 and if he takes surely we just exchange a bunch of pieces right and I'm I mean I guess I'm better because it's difficult for black to develop I suppose but we went b3 and this I played because I know it's a very normal idea in the collie system we have a6 Bishop b2, b5, and here I felt like we needed to strike in the center quickly. Now apparently a4 was playable. And what I had calculated is if b4, then we go c4, and I was very happy. But I didn't think my opponent would do that. If he took, I mean rook a4, and um, it looks pretty good to me, right? But what I was concerned about was c4. Oh, I just have AB5 with an attack on the knight, and he can't take back because of this. So black's best line is this. Ah. Okay. Okay, well, I'll be more aware of this in the future. It was just um, a poor, like, lack of judgment on my part. But C4 is... I mean, it's an inaccuracy, but it's okay. My opponent takes on C4, we take back on C4. He takes on D4, we take back on D4. Knight d4, bishop d4, oh, <laughs> my opponent has e5, I bet some of you saw this as well, and he deflects my bishop away and would take this bishop, so, and obviously my bishop's under attack, ah, oh, well, we both completely missed it, so it's fine, but the thing is, if he doesn't have this e5 move, I know he does have this e5 move, but we both just completely blindsided on it. If he doesn't have the c5 move and he plays a move like bc4, which he does, then I have a fair advantage, which is what I was thinking during the game. So bc4, knight c4, and I just have very good control over the dark squares, and my, bish <clears throat> my bishop is fantastic. My opponent goes knight d5, and I thought that I, I first considered queen h5. That was the first move I considered, but g6, I didn't see a way in. My best move is to retreat. And you can argue, oh, but um, your bishop's really strong. Yeah, but he just trades my bishop off. And if I take, it's no good. I could play knight e5, but I'm just blocking my own sort of attack. So after knight d5, queen, queen h5, I didn't really like. Queen g4 was playable. But again, I thought he just goes bishop f6 in my head. Apparently, I go knight e5 and I'm good, but I don't know. g6. What? I don't even know what I should be doing. Rook ab1, queen g3, rook fd1. I guess the point is that it's difficult for black to actually do anything, which I suppose makes sense. But I didn't see this. I didn't see this. I instead chose bishop e4, which is a good move. I think I said during the game, I spent like five minutes on that move. I just was not sure what the best continuation was. Bishop e4 is fine though, because my idea was if bishop b7, I could try this tactic and win his bishop. Apparently this isn't even that... Oh no, the computer's changing its mind. No, it is good for white. So that, that was part of the reason for bishop e4 to try and bait it out. Apparently here I can sack. Queen h5, king g8. Ah, queen e5. With a fork of mate and the rook. 
And if he plays a move like bishop f6, I take the rook, and he takes, and I take, and I'm up an exchange and a pawn. Very interesting. I knew there was some tactic that I missed. I knew there must have been some kind of tactic. But, I don't know, that, that was kind of a tricky one, in fairness. That was a decent combination. But we... Yeah, after bishop b7... Wait, is the computer changing its mind? No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but knight e5. It's weird because when I'm on the move, it says bishop takes h7 is the best. But then when I come to this move, it says knight e5 is the best move. <laughs> so the computer had to dig kind of deep for that. My opponent goes bishop b7, which is a good move. I played rook b1 because I was looking at potential tactics on the bishop and just trying to freeze the black position. My opponent goes f6. Oh, this was also the position where I couldn't make queen h5 work. My idea was, if g6, then he's completely losing, and I'm correct, because if he takes everything, then he just gets mated, right? But the issue was that after queen h5, he can play knight f6, and I completely, completely bust. So, I go rook b1. f6 is actually the best move. I, again, the computer's changing its mind. Knight g6 is a move, and I did consider this move, but I didn't think it worked. hg6, bishop g6. I thought like, oh, maybe I can get in, but I wasn't convinced. The computer, however, is convinced, and it thinks knight f4 giving up a knight is the best move. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Although, my opponent doesn't have to take the knight. He could play a move like rook f7. And queen h5, threatening, taking e7, and then taking. My opponent has f5. Knight e7, queen e7. Bishop e5. Very, very crazy position. After f6, I chose queen to h5, which gets a brilliant move, but it's not actually the best move in the position. From a practical standpoint, though, with low time, I think it was good. Because, of course, my opponent has to play f5. If he goes g6, then um, I'm just going to take it, and he's going to lose. And if he takes the knight, then he just gets mated. This is a classic checkmating pattern. Make sure here you're not taking with the queen. I mean, you're probably still mating, but it just takes way longer, and you're going to have to use this setup anyway, otherwise it's a, it's a perpetual. So queen h5 forces f5 to block this diagonal, and now he no longer attacks the knight. We go bishop f3, knight f6. And queen to h3. So this is the best line for white. My opponent takes. I take back. Rook b1. Rook b1. Queen d5. Here I did not want to trade queens. I was sure it was okay. And if ed5 I'm probably better. Because I can invade with my rook. Knight d3 is apparently good. Rook b6 is what I wanted to play. Just to go after the a6 pawn. And try and force my opponent to be passive. And d5 is a weakness. F5 is a weakness. A6 is a weakness. But my issue was, after this, I can't put my rook on b6 because he controls that square. And I didn't see an obvious way into the position. So I chose queen e2. And apparently that was just a bad move. Bishop d6 draws, apparently. But it poses some issues, right? Because bishop d6 requires you to not defend a6 f4 is also a move, like, that's kind of tough to find, because again, I just take on a6. Rook a8 is, the, like, the only, it, it, it's the best move that defends the pawn, basically. My opponent goes a5, though, which I think was a natural, it's a natural looking move, but it allows rook b5, and I'm very happy that I found this. h3 was playable, but I think rook b5 is more forcing. If the queen comes to e4, I was planning f3. Queen c4 is apparently a bit better. Knight d5, and then h3, or f3. I don't think it really matters. My idea was f3 and queen to a8, and then we control e4. There's no back rank issues. I can play a move like queen c4. If like knight d5, knight c6 is apparently the best. And then, you know, we're going to have significant pressure over here. If like knight c6, bishop f6 take. He can't take with the knight because I'll take on e6. If he takes with the rook.
Ah, rook b8 check just wins the queen. What am I on about? I was tunnel visioning. So gf6 is the best, and this is obviously losing for black. Like, e4 is very, very dangerous. And whether I would have found e4, I don't know. But I think the activity of my pieces, the weakness of my opponent's king, this is definitely very, very winnable. So my opponent goes queen e8 straight away. We go h3. And rook b8 is a mistake. Queen c4 is the best. Again, if knight d5, queen c6. Ah, and if you take, then I take with check. And then I'm going to take your queen back, and you can't block in a way that wins my rook. Really, really interesting. Uh, but yeah, rook b8 was played. We go queen b2, which is a miss because of bishop b4. Or rook b5 is good. Knight d5 blunders, though. And the thing is, knight d5 is such a natural move. That's the first move that came to my head. a4 is the best. Like, really? Are you really going to play a4? h5? Maybe h6 is playable, but it's still better for white. My opponent goes knight d5, though. And queen d7 is the move. Because we are attacking absolutely everything. Even without concrete calculation. I don't have time to calculate everything here. Because I'm on, I'm on tw 20 seconds, right? I don't have time to calculate everything out. But queen d7 just looks so right. I don't have to worry about my back, back rank anymore because I have h2. And I just attack everything. Queen f8 is played and we know how that continued. Um, Yeah, how could you defend this? I think I was looking at queen a6. But then, yeah, we have this mate. So you can't do that. And I don't think there's any other way to defend this pawn because I control both of these squares that the knight could try and defend from. h6 is the best move. Or oh, knight f4 just giving the knight up is the second best move. Like, it's dire. My opponent chooses queen f8. We take on e6. King h8. And there's just no need to be fancy whatsoever. We can just take on d5. Now, I was looking at... Um, this sort of thing because he can't actually take my knight because the bishop pins the pawn to the king and then we could take on d5 but there is absolutely no need to be fancy whatsoever and also smothered mates don't work because um, the queen is not a rook and the queen can defend the f7 square I've blundered that before so yeah we just take on d5 like this bishop b4 and my opponent resigns I don't know what the best move in this position was. Apparently, this is the best line. And then taking here. Oh, we just go after g7. That's completely winning. Yeah, he can't do anything about that. He's definitely going to lose a queen. Very interesting game, though. Like, it turned into more of a collie. But, you know, the Karo Khan idea is still very, very applicable. I thought we, I actually quite enjoyed, like, this kind of position. Because I enjoy the solidness of the Karo Khan. I think I might employ the Collie as a bit of a weapon that I don't use that often. But people don't study the Collie because people don't play the Collie. So I think I would recommend it to you guys. Those of you who play the Karo Khan, you'll be able to employ many of the same ideas if you play the Collie um, as the white pieces. So yeah, give it a go. Let me know if you're um, particularly... Um, likely to do so, inspired to play the collie perhaps, but yeah, it's not something I'd play every game, but something to have in your back pocket if you want. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.